my pattern is at the start of the pattern repeat and we start first with a chain of seven double stitches in to the first picket of the next chain on the previous round and then now do eight double stitches pico eight double stitches and that's my next chain done now I'm going to switch shuttles and make a ring that is going to go and join onto that ring there. So without turning my work over, but switching shuttles, quite a large ring this is, of five double stitches. Five double stitches, three double, three picots with five double stitches between. Again, without turning the work over, switch shuttles, carrying on with the next chain. Oh, again, matching the other one, eight double stitches, pico, eight double stitches. I'm now going to join it Missing one picot on the same chain, going to the next picot. With a lock join. Like so. The next chain is seven double stitches. First peek out on the next chain. Turn the work over and start in the clover motif. Turn it over. My first ring is ten double stitches, pico seven double stitches, pico three double stitches. Make sure 
that your rings go over the top of this chain here. This one here. Another seven double stitches, Pico three double stitches. Finish on the clover. Draw it up. I'm using Elizabeth thread, size four. Turn it over. And you'll see that we're going to be sort of working anti-clockwise around the motive, which is quite unusual. This is the we're doing eight double stitches, pico eight double stitches. That's my chain. So now I'm going to reverse work again, turning the doily over and do the next clover leaf in exactly the same way, only this time not actually joined to any, any previous row. That's another clover done. Turning the work over again. Eight double stitches, pico, eight double stitches. Turn it over again. I've now done another set of clovers and another chain and I'm about to do the last set of clover on this motif. And this is where it becomes a little more complicated because we have to join to the previous set. Start off by doing the first ring, ignore that. Start off making the middle ring of the clover. Three double snaps. I'm going to, I want to join to that pico there. Now to achieve that, you must make sure, ensure that all your threads come to the back of the work. Bring the doily over your hand and twist it, circle it anti-clockwise over your hand, like so. Okay. And line up the pico of the ring, the large ring that we did before. I'm going to pull the thread through as usual, like so. But now I'm going to push that through to the back, like that. That's why it was important to make sure all the threads were at the back of the work. And then thread the shuttle through as usual, join and work at the back of the work now. Three double stitches. Don't drop the shuttle. Not recommended. And then close the ring, keeping your fingers in the right position. Now without taking your hands away from the work, keep them in that position and do the next ring straight off. over your hand so 
so that we can now line up to join it to the first ring of the clover that we first made, making sure that it, the chain is not on top but underneath, like that. It's a bit fiddly this, it just needs a little patience to join. Make sure again that your threads are at the back of the work. But coming from the front to pull the thread up through the pico, like that to make you look, then push it to the back of the work. Like so. I told you this thread was twisty and then join way and then the rest of the stitches which is 10. joined up motif. Now, continuing with the next chain to complete the motif, we turn the work over, the threads are at the back in the right position to do the chain. Fold the motive like so, and then work the chain, which of course is eight double stitches, Pico eight double stitches. Now we want to join it to the beginning of the motive, to the base of the first clover. And how we do this is just to fiddle about with the thread, put your hook through the front and grab it at the back and draw it up like so. Thread through the loop and then if you fold the work in half make sure that you bring the chain really flush up to the base of the coat before you tighten your lock join and then we've got it joined and now we're ready to carry on with the next chain that goes down to the pico of the chain of the previous round. Again it's eight pico eight. And now we're ready to join to the last pico on the chain of the previous row with the lock join. And we've completed the whole pattern repeat of the coronet diamond motif. And we would start again with our seven chain as we did at the beginning of the video. When you get all the way round to the first one, your last repeat will be joining to the first ring on the second clover that you make. And it's really not that difficult a little fiddly, but I hope this has explained all the little difficulties. It does help that you don't have to do all the cutting and tying and sewing in of ends, because I, if I counted right, I think there are 16 of these around the outside, and that would be a nightmare to have to do. And this is a much better way of doing it, all in one row. Thank you for listening. <laughs>